Represent the finite area enclosed by the two curves, y equals x squared and y equals square root of x as an integral and evaluate it. Let's do a sketch here of what that might look like. Now, by the way, when we do a sketch here, a lot of times with sketches, you have like all four quadrants, quadrants one, two, three, and four. Again, sometimes it's good to be judicious. Is the square root of x going to be ever negative in terms of its y value? I don't think so. And squ x squared, are the y values always going to be positive as well? Yeah. Yeah. And then furthermore, yes, x can be negative in x squared, but I don't think x can be negative under that square root. So what I'm trying to get at is which quadrant is the only quadrant we need to sketch? Yeah, probably only the first quadrant. So let's go ahead and get our sketch going here. Let's do a y-axis this way. Let us do an x-axis, like so. So I think x squared is like a parabola, right? x squared, I think, looks something like this. It's just a sketch, right? Okay, so this is our x squared. And then square root of x is going to look like what? Yes, it doesn't look too different from the natural log graph, right? It's going to, in fact, the square root of a very small number is actually larger than that particular number. So it's going to be something like this, right? Yeah. I mean, again, this is just a sketch. This is, you know, square root of x is y. We have two really important points. Do you agree? Yeah. So we've got an x1 here and an x2 there. Now, x1 and x2, for one thing, are going to be our what's for integration. There's going to be our upper and lower bounds for this area, right? And then furthermore, how can we find x1 and x2? What do we do with these two curves? Remember, these two curves simultaneously. Oh, each other. Yeah, they're the same. Now, clearly they're the same when x1 equals, what, what value is this down here? That's pretty intuitive. Zero. Yeah, just zero, right? Isn't zero squared just zero and square root of zero, zero? Okay, so yeah. we don't need to worry about that one so much. But the other one is when this other point, x2. So x squared equals square root of x for this intersection point, okay? Now there's a couple ways to solve this. One thing you could do is you could square both sides. That'll work just fine, okay? One thing you could also do is if you're clever, you can also move the x squared, or sorry, square root of x over with a minus and then factor out a square root of x. Now I'm gonna contend that it's probably easier to just square both sides. I mean, probably. So you get x to the fourth equals x. Now, a lot of people look at that equation, x to the fourth equals x, and they want to divide both sides by x. What's wrong with that? Wow. Yeah, it turns out if you divide this equation by x, you lose the x equals zero. You lose a root. The proper way to solve an equation like this is you have to still do your factoring. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So x gets factored out. And by the way, that's a common error I've seen a lot of people make. Okay? So if you just get to this point and think, oh, divide by x, like, uh-oh, not good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it would actually make us lose our lower bound because that would just give you x cubed equals 1, and then x would be plus or minus 1. But here, it's much clearer. Okay. Because yeah, here, do you notice that here, this one is x equals 0. That's one solution. But then here is x cubed minus 1 equals 0, which when you take the cube root, there's only one answer. x cubed is positive 1, right? So this point right here is exactly positive 1, right? So now let's start to construct our integral, shall we? Our definite integral. Yeah. So remember, what are the bounds going to be? Yeah, so 0 to 1. Yep. And then remember, we need our upper function minus our lower function. So which one's the upper function here? Square root of x. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if you're not if you're not sure, by the way, you could always choose some intermediate value. You know, so like if you go to your calculator, do like what's the square root of 0.5? Well, that's 0 0.707, square root of a half. And then what's 0.5 squared? Well, that's 0 0.25. So clearly the blue curve is above the red curve. So you could always just do a quick little check but suffice it to say let's move on indeed the blue curve is above the red curve so we need hey if you're enjoying this content could you do me a favor please hit that like button or subscribe below 
Also, you can go to highpeakeducation.com and work with me, work with our business. We have some incredible resources that will help you in your studies. So let's get back to the video. Again, upper minus lower is going to be square root of x minus x squared. And then dx, right? Okay, so we can deal with this. Now, by the way, square root of x, we know to be what? Fractional exponent? One half. Okay, so I'm not going to write that on here, but let's just treat it like that as we move forward. Okay, so let's evaluate into grand using antiderivative. So it's going to be what? Mm -hmm. uh, minus. Oh, careful, what goes in front? Okay, so keep in mind, right? There's two things that ever happen on any problem. You succeed or you learn. Hopefully you can hear my voice in your head the next time you do this, okay? So think yeah. about my voice, okay? That we got to, as soon as you raise the power, you've got to multiply by the reciprocal of the new power in front, okay? Okay. So in the same way, this should be x to the third, and then now what? There we go, one third x to the third, exactly. And then we have our bounds here, right? x equals one and x equals zero. So let's put the values in, right? Two thirds, one to the three halves, minus one third, one cubed. Now, by the way, when you plug in zero here, what's gonna happen to both terms clearly? There's gonna be zero, right? So I'm just gonna leave that off, just minus zero, right? <laughs> so no need to kind of include that whole thing in terms of upper minus lower with the bounds. Okay, so what's one to the three halves? Yeah, it's one, and if you're not 100% sure, remember the three halves power, say on some z, is equal to z square root and then raised to the third, or you could do z to the third, whoops, sorry, z to the third square root. Either order is fine. So square root of one is one, one to the third is one. So we just get one, so we've got two thirds. And then minus one to the third is definitely one. So we've got two thirds minus a third. So what do we get? Just one third. third. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So let's 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 review the steps. I would sketch. I mean, it doesn't need to be a perfect sketch, but some sort of sketch. And by the way, if you have a graphing calculator, this will help you too. Set equal to find the points of intersection. Yes. Then what's the next step? Solve uh, for what? Solve. Yeah, so the bounds. So solve for those. Okay, so we've got, those are our bounds. Yeah. Then we do what here? We set up the, set up the definite integral. Yes. And then what are we doing here? Yep. Antiderivative. And then we use the bounds. Good. A lot better. <laughs>